I am so excited for today's video. I recently bought into a stock that could 2 to 3x in the next 5 years and run hard after the presidential election. And I have a very special guest coming to help explain that thesis. We're also going to talk about what could be the investment of the century. We're talking 10 to 15x over the next 10 years. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we're talking all things Canadian solar, why I bought in, and water as the possible investment of the century. This is a hefty video so I needed to recruit some outside help. Today I have the amazing opportunity to introduce to all of you Daniel Pronk. Daniel is another finance YouTuber that I really respect. He's very level-headed and very rational with his investing. Daniel's been covering Canadian solar for a while now and again he's a great person to follow and the point of this channel is to make you an independent investor. And if that means introducing you to some other channels, of course we're going to do that. All right, I think I've built up the suspense quite enough. Daniel, introduce yourself to the people. Hello everyone and first off I just want to say thank you to Matthew for allowing me to come on the channel and introduce myself to all of you. Matthew is a solid investor and arguably an even better content creator who I personally look up to. You all are so blessed to have someone with this much energy and enthusiasm consistently making content for all of you and he's someone that I find myself learning from quite often. But anyways, Matthew and I got in contact because he just purchased one of my favorite stocks in my portfolio that I've been holding for quite some time. And I got to admit, I was pretty stoked to hear that he got in. Thank you so much, man. Now let's get right into it. Canadian solar, if you could talk about that thesis, and later in the video we'll talk about water, the potential 10 to 15x. Of course. So Canadian solar, ticker CSIC, is a great solar company that seems to be quite undervalued relative to its peers, and pretty much in general. They also report earnings sometime around November 10th, so it's going to be pretty interesting to see how the company is performing with everything going on in the world right now. I got in CSIC at $20.34 sometime around the beginning of July, and back then, the stock had a price to earnings ratio of 4, and a price to free cash flow ratio of only 3. Back then, they were also selling below book value, and after about 3 days of research, I could not figure out why the stock was selling for so cheap. So I decided to buy in. And I really think that this stock could grow by two to three times over the next decade as the solar industry continues growing and they continue growing alongside with it. Yeah, I definitely hear you on that. And I was so jealous to hear that you got in at a PE of four and it just shows there's value to be found everywhere. I think right now they have a PE of about eight or nine. So I'm curious if you've seen any recent news or big catalysts that shareholders should be aware of. Yes, absolutely. They just got a deal with Goldman Sachs at their Mustang solar plant. And in my opinion, I think that this is a large part to why the stock has been rallying so much recently. That and the fact that Joe Biden is leading in the polls right now. Now, I don't know if Joe Biden is going to win the election and I don't want to get too political here, but if Joe Biden does end up winning, then I think that solar stocks in general will see quite a bit of upside. In this article, it talks about the recent Mustang deal with Goldman Sachs. Canadian solar executives, including CEO and chairman Dr. Sean Q, had said that the company saw significant growth opportunities in the solar plus storage market, as it reported its latest financial results. This growth extended to Canadian solar, claiming an energy storage project backlog and pipeline totaling 4,683 megawatt hours, as at the end of June 2020, which was double what it reported in the previous quarter. In my opinion, this is why the company is scaling up production so much right now. They just recently did a $200 million financing to fund the expansion of their production, so they can execute on all of this backlog too. So essentially, they are expanding like crazy to meet all of this demand, and I don't think demand is going to slow down anytime soon for the solar industry. So Solar is projected to be the fastest growing industry over the next 30 years, while countries move more and more to sustainable energy. I'm a hyperbole on solar though, so I see this as a potential 20 to 30 year hold, and just allowing this company to grow alongside the solar industry. 100%. There's no doubt that renewables are the future, and in my opinion, there's no better time to get in on a play like Seasick. But speaking of long term trends, and I love all your videos, but I think the most interesting recent video that you've put out is your investment thesis on water as a long term winner. And I think a lot of people think, you know, water, like that's boring, that's not exciting, but I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this on YouTube. I think it needs more recognition. Could you talk about your unique thesis and why it's so exciting? 
Yes, absolutely. I think that water is going to be one of the best investments over the next 30 years. And I mean, I titled my own video, Water, the investment of the century. Yeah, I actually loved that title. It definitely piqued my interest and you backed it up in the video. It wasn't clickbait. Shocked the almighty YouTube algorithm did not pick that one up. But anyways, let's hear it. Yeah, and I know that's a pretty bold statement, and I know that it's hard to see water as an investment opportunity, because I'm sure that all of us watching this video have no real problem accessing it. But the world is currently running out of it at an alarming rate. The fact that our global freshwater resources are depleting is already a problem for many parts of the world, and over time, it is only going to grow into a problem for many more of us. And the reason for this depletion is led by two main factors. The first one is climate change. And the second one is that the human population continues growing. Right, so I feel like everyone's kind of heard of this freshwater issue before, and a lot of people just kind of shrug it off because it doesn't affect as many people right now. So could you give us some real world examples or historical context to show us this is actually a problem going on today? Definitely so. Since the beginning of the 19th century, our demand for water has increased by around 700% from around 600 billion cubic meters of water used annually to about 4 trillion in 2014. The increase in our water demand has been exponential and is only going to continue rising. In fact, water demand globally is projected to increase by 55% between 2000 and 2050. Much of this demand is driven by agriculture, which accounts for 70% of global freshwater use. Food production will need to grow by 69% by 2035, as the population of the world continues growing and more food needs to be grown to sustain our population. This chart right here shows us that in 1928, there was 2 billion people on the planet. In 2019, that number skyrocketed by over 350% to 7.7 .7 billion. And by the end of 2050, the global population is projected to hit 9.7 billion people, or about 25% higher than we are at today. When we put these two charts together, we can see how our water demand has grown almost perfectly in proportion to our population. And as our population continues increasing, so will our demand for fresh water. Now, many of you are probably thinking, well, we don't currently have a freshwater crisis, so we could deal with our population growing a little more before it becomes a problem, right? Well, no. Even without our population growing, we would still be experiencing a significant shortage of fresh water all around the globe from global warming. Cape Town, South Africa, unfortunately, is a great example of a city that has suffered from water scarcity. In 2018, Cape Town, South Africa was approaching what we call day zero which is the day when the city officially runs out of water, and the taps stop running. The city is home to over 4 million people, and is the most recent case of a city facing severe water shortages. This article from National Geographic reads, Population growth and a record drought, perhaps exasperated by climate change, is sparking one of the world's most dramatic urban water crises, as South African leaders warn that residents are increasingly likely to face day zero. That's the day previously projected for mid-April, but now mid-July, when the city says it will be forced to shut off taps to homes and businesses, because reservoirs have gotten perilously low, a possibility officials now consider almost inevitable. In the end, rain finally came, and the city successfully avoided running out of water. But Cape Town still serves as a real-life example of what's to be expected. And Cape Town is not alone and many other places around the world are starting to experience their own water scarcity. This chart right here shows us that in 1962, Mexico had 11,363 cubic meters of renewable freshwater resources per capita. By 2017, this number dropped by 69% to just 3,756, and the trend is continuing lower. In 1962, the U.S. had 15,951 cubic meters of renewable freshwater resources, and by 2017, that number dropped by 41% to 9,459. As we can see, the U.S. trend is continuing down as well. One more article from BBC reads, Of the world's major aquifers, gravel and sandfield underground reservoirs, 21 out of 37 are receding, from India and China to the United States and France. The Ganges Basin in India is depleting, due to population and irrigation demands, by an estimated 6.31 centimeters every year. Jay Fengamaletti, senior water scientist at NASA, has warned that the water table is dropping all over the world. There is not an infinite supply of water. Andrew Steer, CEO of the World Resource Institute says, Water stress is the biggest crisis no one is talking about. Its consequences are in plain sight, in the form of food insecurity, conflict and migration, and financial instability. 
I agree with him completely, and as water scarcity continues accelerating, I believe that more of the world is going to take action against it. There's actually one country that already faced their own water crisis, and came out of it with more water than the country needs, and this country is Israel. In 2008, Israel was on the edge of their own water crisis. A decade-long drought had dried up the soil and wreaked havoc on Israel's largest source of fresh water, the Sea of Gilalee. Water restrictions were imposed and many farmers lost a years of crop. The turnaround started in 2007, when low-flow toilets and showerheads were installed nationwide, and most importantly, the National Water Authority built innovative water treatment systems that recycle 86% of the water that goes down the drain, and use it for irrigation. To put how incredible this is into perspective, Spain comes in second, with only 19% of their water being recycled. However, even with these measures in place, Israel needed another 500 million cubic meters of fresh water annually. Which is why the Sea of Gilalee was draining so rapidly, because the country was relying on it, just like a savings account. Wow, yeah, no, so there's definitely a global issue going on right now as we speak. We have the facts to prove it. It's just kind of under the mainstream radar because of all the other news going on. And in our personal conversations, we could talk about what to do to kind of help the situation. But for this investing channel, let's talk about the investment opportunity. I'm happy you asked because this is where desalination comes in. The Ashkelon, Hedera, and Sorek desalination plants in Israel put out a total of more than 600 million cubic meters of fresh drinking water annually, which is more than the 500 million Israel needed to achieve. The Sea of Gilalee is fuller once again, and Israel's farms are thriving. Over 55% of Israel's drinking water now comes from desalination, and no one in the country is without access to fresh water. The main argument against desalination used to be how expensive it was, but Israel's Sorek plant is able to produce 1,000 liters of drinking water for just 58 cents, which allows Israeli households to pay about $30 US a month for their water. That's actually cheaper than people pay in LA and Las Vegas. Ah, very interesting. So if we look to Kathy Woods, the CIO of ARK Invest, everyone loves her these days. We know she likes to invest on the cost curve of innovation, meaning as innovation becomes less expensive, more affordable, it gets ready for mass adoption and thus accelerated growth. So I'm wondering, do you think that kind of investment philosophy applies in this situation? Is that what we're seeing here? That is 100% exactly what is going on here. Since the cost of desalination has been dropping so rapidly, desalination plants are on the rise, and this is why the industry has been growing so consistently. In this article it reads, Meanwhile, the cost of desalinated water has been coming down, as technology evolves and the cost of other sources increases. In the last three decades, the cost of desalination has dropped by more than half. This is exactly what happens in new industries, and we saw the same thing with solar. Desalination plants have been around since the 60s, but they weren't economically viable. Over time, as technology improves, and as the demand for these plants increases, they received increased investor capital, as there is more incentive to pursue the technology and build the plants. This chart right here shows us the historic growth of the desalination industry, as the demand for them continues increasing. It originally took 40 years for our total desalination capacity to hit 20 million cubic meters of fresh water per day. However, right around the year 2000, the growth in the industry really started to take off. And over the next 20 years, our global desalination capacity has grown by just under 500%. And we are now producing around 100 million cubic meters per day. We can also see that the trend is clearly going up too, and it looks like it is not going to slow down. In this next chart, we can see the future projections of the desalination industry. This little bar on the left is how much we produce right now, which again is right around 100 million cubic meters per day. And as we can see, by 2050, the global desalination industry is projected to produce over 4.5 billion cubic meters of fresh water per day. This is about a 4,500% growth to this industry, or in other words, it's projected to be about 45 times bigger than it is today. We are literally just getting started, and I believe that we are going to see some amazing technological advancements in this industry over the coming decades. That is a crazy amount of growth, and this is why I think the desalination industry in specific is such a great investment for the long term, as global warming continues intensifying and as our demand for water continues increasing. Now, desalination is not the sole solution to the problem, but it is going to play a large part in the overall solution. I personally think that being exposed to this industry early and finding the potential winners in it before anyone else is even paying attention will create a great investment opportunity. The stock that I chose to invest in is H2O Innovation, ticker symbol H-E-O-F-F. -F. 
And I got to admit that this is a smaller company, but I do think that it has potential to be a 10 bagger over the next decade as water scarcity continues growing. I may not cover all of the hot growth stocks on my channel, but I am always looking for the next value investment opportunity. And this has proven to provide me and my audience with amazing returns. Yeah, I can definitely attest to the fact that Daniel puts out great content, makes great picks in the market. If you think my videos are detailed, just go check out one of his. His investing philosophy and style is so solid. So it's been so amazing to have Daniel on this channel. So thank you so much for sharing not one, but two theses with us in this video. You're very welcome and thank you for having me on. I also appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk to your audience, and I really hope that you all enjoyed the video. Make sure you all smash that like button for Matthew. It's been an honor coming on your channel, man, and I hope to see you all again over on mine. You heard the man. If you found any value in this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, check out a quote of the day. You might just learn something. I don't know who said it. <laughs> make sure to follow me on Instagram for a daily post about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. If you're watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous. Seriously, though, let's get this man to 100,000 subscribers.